Hello and welcome to Cataclysm University. My name is Vormithrax and this is course number 11 where we're going to be talking about the speed and movement point system in the game. So in Cataclysm it is a turn-based game. The turns are represented by, you can call them turns or rounds, whatever term you'd like to use, but it's a six second period of time. So what happens in game is that when a round begins you are granted a pool of movement points or action points that you get to spend over those six seconds. So this is represented here by the speed value. Your default or base speed value is 100. So you're granted at the beginning of a new round 100 points that you can spend on any actions that you'd like to occur. If you try to spend points beyond the 100, it basically will spend your 100 and then queue up the difference, the remaining amount, for the next round to occur. So if I'm trying to perform an action that costs 150 points, I'll spend my 100. The action does not occur yet. When the next round begins, I'll have to spend an additional 50 out of my pool for that round, and that's when the action then actually fires off. So the speed number is very, very important. This represents the point pool that you're allowed to have for that round. So, the higher the number, the better. You want to make sure this speed at least stays at 100 if you can manage it, and goes higher if possible. There are a few modifiers that can cause speed to go up, things like high morale, stimulants, the quick trait, and so on. Unfortunately, there's not as many ways to raise it as there are to lower it. A lot of things will lower the speed value, carrying excess weight, pain, painkillers, low morale, radiation, thirst, hunger, the list goes on. Those are the types of things that will cause your speed value to decrease. Lower is bad, and it will color code this when it goes down or up so that you're aware of what's happening. But you want to be really careful with that speed value. If it lowers and you don't notice, you're going to be in some trouble. So the net effect of having a low speed is this in really stark, broad terms. If you are at half speed, meaning 50 speed value, the effect in game, what you're going to see, is effectively doubling the monster's speed. So, in the play of the game world, as you're moving from space to space, you won't really notice anything. But as soon as a monster is in the mix, when you try to move a space, where previously he would only move one space closer, all of a sudden he's moving two spaces closer. So it has the illusion of making it look like everything around you is moving faster, when in effect, or in actuality, it's you that's moving slower. Everybody else is just getting twice as many actions compared to what you're getting. So be very aware and watch out for your speed value. So it's the pool of points you get to spend each round. Higher is better, lower is bad. All right, so the next thing to talk about is the value here, just to the right of the speed number. That represents how many points, or how many action points or movement points it costs you to perform the previous action. So, an easy example is I'm going to step one space to my left. As soon as I get the cursor back over here, there we go. And you can see the number changed. It said 116. So it cost me 116 movement points to move one space to my left. And I can just go back and forth and you can see it's 116 each time. Now, here's a difference. If I try to clamber up onto this counter, it cost me 166 to do that. 166 to get down, and now I'm back to the normal movement space between these floor spaces. So, you want to be careful when you're trying to escape from monsters not to step on or over rough terrain, counters, bushes, and things like that. They increase the number of points that you have to spend for, out of your pool in order to accomplish the action. So try to stay on level, clear ground when possible if getaway is your goal. Okay, so the next thing to know about the points, uh, and that's all this number represents. It's just a last turn or last uh, action cost uh, reference so that you can compare. So effectively what happened here is in order for me to move one space over, it's taking me more than one round or more than one six second period in order to do that. So I'm having to spend my 100 points, at which point I'm still standing right here. A new round started. I paid an additional 16 points, and that's when my character actually moved over. Now, if there were monsters in the area, you would see them moving simultaneously, and it just compares the points. Now, an important distinction is, when a new round begins, you always get to go first. 
So new round starts, first thing that happens, your point pool refreshes, you get however many speed points, or whatever your speed value is, you're awarded that many points to spend. You spend all of your points first, once you've exhausted your point pool, then the monsters get to do their actions and spend their points. Once they're done, then the NPCs get to do theirs. So your buddy will get to do his attacks or moves or whatever he's going to do. So it's always you first, then the monsters, then the NPCs. So once you understand that portion of it, the next thing to look at is action point costs. So I just showed you an example where I moved up onto the counter and it costs additional points. Now, you'll notice the character that I'm using does not have much in the way of gear. And one thing I want to point out is the boots down here. So turn out boots, I'm going to grab them and we're going to wear them. And I've got either dress shoes or the turnout boots. Let's throw the turnout boots on first and then move a space. 120 points to move that space. All right, let's take the boots off, move a space, 116. Let's wear the dress shoes, move a space, 103. Well, that's curious, 103 with the dress shoes. If I go barefoot, it's 116. So you want some kind of foot protection. Running around barefoot on hard floors and hard terrain is harder. And so you actually spend less points if you have shoes on than if you're barefoot. But because the turnout boots, if I try to uh, wear those instead, there's a trade-off. It's going to cost more points to move in them because if I look at my character screen and go to my feet, they're very, very bulky. They've got a high encumbrance value, and they increase the running speed cost, which I'll show you next, but they also have an effect on your just base movement for walking speed. So you want to pay attention to that. It's something important to be aware of. So I'm actually cost, because it cost me 120 to move this way, that's almost 20% more points to move a space than if I was wearing the dress shoes. So yes, they're much more protecting value, so that's great for the armor protection, but it's costing me action points. Sometimes action points are what you need. If you're trying to get away, you don't want to be wearing really heavy, bulky clothing, be overweight, you want to be paying attention to your foot gear, and so on, if escape is your goal. So it might be worth actually taking off certain footwear or swapping it out and then running. <laughs> so just depends. All right, so a couple other things to note. Um, We've mentioned the standard movement point cost. We've got currently um, the dress shoes on. So we're getting 103 movement points. So that's great. Just barely over one round in order to move a space. So what does running do? Well, running specifically halves the movement point cost, but it burns your stamina. So this is your stamina bar. I've mentioned it in some of the other courses. And you've got a limited amount of stamina. So if I switch to run mode, which you do with the apostrophe key, I believe. <laughs> and then you move a space, you'll notice my point cost was only 51, and the R indicates I'm in running mode. So it's half of the value that walking would cost. So effectively, I can move twice as far in that six second period of time. Um, so I can almost get two full spaces of movement out of a single pool of 100 points in a round. So the net effect is it's twice as fast. So I can move twice as fast over the ground, but it's burning up my stamina. So if I move, 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 and it's probably not gonna show it here, but you can see my stamina value now is starting to drop. Now it's in the yellow, and you'll start to hear your character doing some heavy breathing. You'll eventually run out of stamina points and you'll have to stop running. So you'll have to, you'll have to turn that mode off and then recover your stamina. You'll let some time pass. So that's the, the trade-off. You get increased speed, meaning it's half of a cost movement point-wise or action point-wise to actually move over the space, but it's at the cost of stamina, which will eventually run out. And if you run out of stamina and you have not lost your pursuers, then you don't have any stamina to fight with. So that's very dangerous. All right, next example that we need to cover. So I've got a Thompson submachine gun to my right here. I'm going to go ahead and pick that up and give you a hypothetical. So let's say that you've got Zombies charging at you and you've just clicked empty on your submachine gun. Oh my god, you're about to die. What are you going to do? You're going to have to make a choice to either run away or to fight. How do you make the choice and what is a better choice for the situation you're in is going to be based largely on these action points that we're talking about. So 
in this example, if I look up the Thompson submachine gun, you can see right here how many moves per attack it's going to cost to fire the gun. So if it has ammo loaded and it's ready to go, if all I want to do is point at a nearby zombie and shoot at it, it's going to cost 188 moves per attack that I try to perform. Now, I only have 100 speed, so I'm going to effectively give the order to do a fire. It's going to deduct 100 points, my entire point pool that I currently have. It will not fire the gun at that point. The, my round will end. The monsters are going to get their turn, so they'll perform their actions and spend their point pool. Then the round ends. The next round begins. I get to go first, so I've still got 88 points that I owe and before I can fire the gun. So it'll then say, okay, here's your new 100 points from your pool. 88 of that will then be spent to satisfy the previous command that I gave. Now that that has been spent, it will fire the gun, and I'll still have 12 points remaining that I can apply to a new action. So I have to decide, when I make this attack with this particular weapon, is that the best choice depending on how close the zombies are and other tactical considerations? But that's how the process works for action points and movement points that will allow you to make these kinds of decisions. Now, to see something in the same vein, for an example, let's say you've clicked empty on your submachine gun and now it's either fight or flight. Am I going to run away or am I going to try to stay and reload this gun? So if I hit the reload command, whoops, got to wield the gun first. If I hit R to reload, this window pops up where you can get your choices on what kind of ammo and from where. So currently I've got 45 caliber ACP jacketed hollow point bullets just laying on the ground at my feet. So it's on the floor. It's actually just north of me. And it's going to cost this many moves or action points in order for me to grab that ammo and reload it into the gun. So 380 movement points. Realize that's almost four full turns of base movement points. So if a zombie is three spaces away and you give the command to reload this gun, he's going to get essentially almost four full spaces of movement and be up in your face. So you know, based on how you have seen the zombies act, just basically their relative speed factor. I mean, some creatures are much faster than others, and you'll get a feel for that as you play the game. There's no direct way to see exactly what their movement abilities are or how many points they might have, but it's fairly obvious after some play. So a standard zombie is going to move one space per round, essentially, or maybe every other round. Um, but this will give you the information you need to decide, is it better for me to try to reload this thing, knowing it's going to cost 380 action points, essentially four rounds of my turns, before I'm going to get this thing reloaded. Then I'm going to have to spend an additional 180 before the gun's actually going to fire. So it could be six rounds before this thing's actually going to go off again. So am I better doing that and waiting it out, or do I just take off running? And realize getting hit and so on can also affect things. So I think that gives you all the information that you're going to need. Um, covers the speed and movement points. So just be aware of how important this is when you're making your decisions. When things get really dicey, that's when you want to look carefully at your current speed stat, your point costs for whatever actions you're trying to perform, and make intelligent decisions from there. So I hope you found the information helpful, and if you have any further questions about this or any other topic we cover in the university, please don't hesitate. Uh, best place is to visit the Discord channel link below where you can ask any questions you'd like, and I'd be happy to answer those. There's also other folks there that are very knowledgeable about the game that can probably help out. And I also have my other social media contacts listed below. If you'd like to help the channel grow, one of the best ways you can support me and the channel is to visit those and like, subscribe, follow, whichever options each platform form offers so that we can grow and uh, continue to improve the channel as time goes by. So again, have a great day and a good apocalypse.